Welcome to Mechanical PE Exam Prep Problem of the Week, a series where I solve HVAC practice problems submitted by Mechanical PE candidates, and I choose them based on how complex they are, how interesting they are, and how common the problems I see are with other candidates. And hopefully these problems help you get ready for the next test date. So let's dive in. If the flow to a cooling tower with a range of 10 degrees and entering water temperature of 95 degrees and an approach of 7 degrees is 30,000 GPM, what is the leaving water temperature if the flow is increased by 30%? So one of the things that the student that submitted this wasn't sure about, and I wasn't sure about either, is whether the heat load is changing. It doesn't say that the heat load is changing, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume it stays the same but it doesn't say why the flow rate change is being increased. It could be an operational change. So it seems like the problem would be undefined, that there would be too many variables if you didn't assume that the load stays the same. So ultimately we decided to go ahead and make that assumption, that simplifying assumption that seems to make the problem possible, although still not obvious or easy. So let's go with that. We'll say that the heat load is a fixed quantity which is equal to 500 GPM delta T for water systems. And that Q initial, let's call it Q1, is equal to Q final, let's call it Q2. Uh, that's not changing. So then if we set those equal, we could say G GPM1 times delta T1 equals GPM2 times delta T2. And then we could solve from there where we know the ratio of the GPMs, GPM2 over GPM1 equals 1.3, right, because it increased by 30%, and that equals delta T1 over delta T2. And we know delta T1 is the water delta T in the cooling tower, which is the same thing as the range. This is the condenser water return minus the condenser water supply. Or in this problem, let's talk about it as the entering water temperature minus the leaving water temperature. So that was originally 10, we can plug that in here, and then solve for delta T2. Delta T2 turns out to be 7.7. .7. So the range used to be 10, and now it's going to decrease to 7.7, .7, which makes sense. We're moving more volume. We're going to have a smaller delta T. But what we can't assume is that the entering water temperature, the condenser water return, is still going to be 95, right? We don't know that that's the case. It could be different in the new operating setup. So how do we deal with that? Well, we still need some kind of a bridge from the original case to the new case that's not based on load because we've already used that fact. And what we're gonna use is the efficiency. So let's remind ourselves what the efficiency is and some of the important definitions that we need. So the efficiency of a cooling tower is the range divided by the range plus the approach. And now let's separately remind ourselves what those are. So we just said range is entering water temperature minus leaving water temperature. That's range. And approach is leaving water temperature minus the wet bulb temperature outside. So when you put that all together, what is range plus approach? Well, it's this, entering water temperature minus leaving water temperature, plus this, leaving water temperature minus wet bulb. So the leaving water temperature cancels out. So you end up with just entering water temperature minus wet bulb temperature. So let's write that out. That might be useful. So we might use it in this form, or we might use it as and this is a, a useful way to think about it. It's useful to be able to be flexible in the ways that you can think about it, but this is a good one. So entering minus leaving over entering minus wet bulb. So the numerator is how cold you're getting the water. It comes back and enters the tower. This is how cold you get it. This is how cold you could get it. If the approach approaches zero, then the leaving water temperature is approaching the wet bulb temperature of the air. And that would be the most efficient possible outcome. That would mean that this ratio would start to approach one and you'd have a 100% efficient cooling tower. 
Okay, so we're going to assume that the efficiency doesn't change, which you could critique that assumption and say, well, you're changing the flow rate. Of course the efficiency is going to change, and fair enough. But we're not changing it by that much, and we need something to go on. So if you have another suggestion as to how we bridge from the original to the new, I'd like to hear it. Otherwise, uh, we can maybe try to identify some caveats and poke some holes in this at the end. But if the answer comes out and seems reasonable, I'd like to suggest we set the old efficiency and the new efficiency equal. So let's do that. In fact, let's change color and do that. So we'll say efficiency 2 equals efficiency 1. And what does efficiency 1 equal? Well, what do we know? We know entering is 95. We know the range is 10. So we know the leaving is 85 in the original case. And do we know the wet bulb? Well, we know the approach is 7. We knew the leaving was 85, so the wet bulb must have been 78, right? So that gives us the ability to plug it in at this level or plug it in at this level. Take your pick. I'm going to do this because it's just a little quicker and easier. The range is 10, and the range plus approach is 10 plus 7, which is 17. So the efficiency is 0.588. Now applying that for efficiency 2, we know the new range is 7.7. .7. And the denominator then is 7.7 .7 plus the new approach. Let's call it A2, and we can solve for that. So I trust you can do the algebra. You'll discover that A2 equals 5.4. And the wet bulb temperature hasn't changed. So we can use this formula and say that the approach is 5.4, which equals the leaving water temperature minus the wet bulb. So we add 78 to the other side, and the leaving water temperature equals 83.4. So let's think about this. The range went from 10 to 7.7, .7, which makes sense because we're moving more volume flow. We're going to get less delta T, smaller range, fine. But now the approach went from 7 to 5.4. It went down. At first, that bothered me because I thought, hey, you know, we're moving more water. We should be getting less heat transfer. But then I thought about, well, what is the cooling tower really and how does it work? The whole point is that it evaporates some of the water in order to cool all of the other water that doesn't evaporate down significantly. So if you move 30% more water through the cooling tower, then that means 30% more of that volume gets to drip over the cooling tower fill and have outside air that's relatively drier moved across it and evaporate more of that water and do more evaporative cooling, right? So that's going to have a greater cooling effect. So it actually does make sense for a larger volume that the approach, how close you're able to get to the wet bulb temperature, is going to be improved, right? It's going to go from 7 down to 5.4. That's believable. So the leaving water temperature actually gets a bit lower. And as predicted, the entering water temperature, which is not what the question asked, but if we're curious for the sake of completeness, it would be 78 plus the 5.4 is 83.4. That's the leaving plus the 7.7. .7. That would give us an entering water temperature of 91.1, which is lower than the original entering water temperature of 95. So had we assumed that the entering water temperature is the same, um, which we really had no grounds for doing, but had we made that false assumption, we'd probably be off in our final answer by about four degrees. We'd be saying that the final answer is something like 87, um, about 87 or so, which um, which I don't believe is correct. So I wouldn't bet $1,000 on this answer, but I'd bet 100 And uh, if anyone has any other thoughts, then I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, I hope thinking through this problem reminded you about how to calculate cooling tower efficiency, what the definitions of range and approach mean, and how to find a bridge between an original set of operating conditions and some new set of operating conditions, whether that be using the load or using the efficiency. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.